So I was able to get my hands on a Golden Axe Arcade 1-Up cabinet, and I do gotta say that I am pretty excited about it. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, welcome back to the channel. Now, as I just said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Arcade 1UP Golden Axe Arcade Cabinet. Now, this was actually unveiled earlier on this year at CES 2020, and literally the moment I saw it, I was completely drawn in. Golden Axe has been and is still probably one of my favorite beat-em-ups that have ever been released and being able to have a dedicated arcade one-up version of it is pretty cool. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about each title later on in the video but this cabinet does come with five built-in titles the headliner Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder, the original Golden Axe Shinobi, Altered Beast, and Wrestle Wars. Now these machines were actually quite limited in terms of stock as far as I've seen and they are currently no longer available on the Arcade 1UP website or even in Canada at the current retailers. Now we have heard some rumors that we may see these things start to trickle out again and resurface in 2021 at certain retail partners of Arcade 1UP. So I am hoping that that is the case because this is a cabinet if you are into beat em ups that you're going to want to pick up. Now I won't talk too much about assembly since it is incredibly straightforward to get this thing built. It takes about 45 minutes from start to finish. Now the big notable features of this cabinet are that it does include a graphic riser, a four player control deck, as well as a lit marquee. And it is important to note that there is only one four player title on this cabinet and the rest are either single player or two player games. And the four player game is actually going to be the flagship title for the machine, Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder. And this is actually the first time since the original 1992 arcade release that this title is receiving a port. And I actually can't think of any better way to do it than on an arcade machine. Now looking over the machine, they did this game justice. It really does actually look like the original machine in terms of the artwork and the graphics. Now there are going to be some obvious minor differences like form factor, but to me that's really not a big deal at all. Everything from the side art to the marquee to the control deck are very accurate representations and overall the look of this device is an absolute home run. No arguments whatsoever can be made here. Now there are a couple hangups that I had, but these are much more related to quality assurance issues rather than design issues. So out of the box, I did have some damaged panels, nothing crazy, but certainly some issues that were present prior to packaging. The corner of the rear riser panel was crushed, some small nicks and bubbling in the side panels, and even paint peeling off the bezel, likely due to application prior to the curing process completing. And I mean, most of these are very minor issues with the exception of the crushed corner. I mean, that's pretty aggressive, but things happen and this isn't completely out of the norm for a product like this. And before I talk about emulation, there are a couple things that I do want to discuss about in terms of the button mapping. So there is some community discussion about the button mapping scheme for Altered Beast not matching the true arcade layout. Essentially, the kick button and the jump button should be swapped to how they are currently mapped. And I can actually see why Arcade 1UP didn't follow the true original layout. So the control deck itself actually has labels called jump, attack, and magic printed directly to it. So my guess is that Arcade 1UP probably thought it might be confusing for some people who are not actually familiar with that game's original mapping. And to look at the control deck and to see something labeled as jump, but to press it and the character actually kicked on screen might actually be a bigger issue. Honestly, I don't really have an issue with their solution here, and I can absolutely see the argument being made on both sides, but to me, this really isn't a problem. Now giving them credit for that, there are certainly a couple button mapping issues that I think they should consider fixing. And the first obvious one is that you can only control the main UI using the player one controls 
when you should be able to use any of the other four joysticks like you can on their NBA Jam cabinet. Now, their other four-player cabinet, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, could also only be controlled from the player one spot, but it's important to note that both of the games on that machine also made use of the player one position. On Golden Axe, only one game uses either the player one or the player four controls. So naturally, I feel like being able to control from the player two position when four out of the five titles require you to be in that position anyway to play the games would make more sense. And the only other real quirk with button mapping that I personally noticed was actually linked to my last point. So with the four titles that are either one or two players, you are forced to use the player two and player three positions respectively. And this is totally fine because you do want to stand centered in front of the machine as much as possible. The weird thing is, you still have to use the player one and player two start buttons to enter the game. This really doesn't feel natural. When you are in the player two position and you need to add a credit to continue, naturally your right hand would move up from the buttons and hit your coin button. But if you did that, you wouldn't be adding a coin for yourself, you'd be adding a coin for player two. You actually need to reach over and hit the player one coin button in order to give yourself a credit. Now this isn't a huge deal being in the player two position reaching over to player one credit, but you do have to remember it. The much bigger issue is that if you are the second player, which would be in the player three position, they actually need to reach over top of the first player who is currently standing in the player two position in order to access their coin start button. And I don't really love this because this would definitely get in the way of some actual gameplay. Now, to be fair, this is probably something that could very easily be fixed in a firmware update, and maybe I've missed something, and there is actually a good reason for them doing this, I just can't really think of it. So now we're going to move into the emulation territory, and there really is not much to say here. Arcade One Up contracted Code Mystics to do this cabinet, and they are the same company that did the Star Wars cabinet, and more recently the NBA Jam arcade cabinet emulation, and I gotta tell you, these guys know what they are doing, because the emulation on this thing is pretty well perfect. The games run incredibly well and you don't have any hangups whatsoever. You really and genuinely get an arcade-like experience playing these games on this machine. Starting with Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder, this is the only game on the device, as I said, that makes use of all four controllers. Now, this is also above and beyond my favorite game on the machine. It is important to note that this is not the easiest game to emulate, and sure, general gameplay is fine, but some of the transition screens where the game has many different textures happening on screen all at the same time, you're going from a side scrolling to a forward moving motion, the game has definitely had a tendency to glitch out in other emulators, but that is not at all the case here. Level transitions are great, and you really can enjoy this game the way it was designed. Now, the original Golden Axe plays just as well, too, and I certainly appreciate them including this in the package, as I would argue this franchise is one of the best beat-em-ups released by Sega in the early 90s in the arcade format, so having access to the title that started it all is a really awesome. Shinobi was also a welcome sight to see here. Although it is an incredibly difficult game, it is a ton of fun and does require a fair amount of skill to get through, skill in which I personally do not possess. And then we're moving on to Altered Beast, which is another awesome Sega classic that is near and dear to my heart. Now, mind you, I never actually got to experience this game on an actual arcade machine. I grew up playing this game on the Sega Genesis, and got my first real taste of the arcade game in my early teens when I started getting involved with PC emulation. Just another really awesome title in the lineup on this machine. And finally, we have Wrestle Wars. And to be completely honest, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about having this title included on this machine. For one, it is a game that was designed for a vertical monitor. And two, I kind of felt like it was a little bit out of place here. I mean, we have four side-scrolling beat-em-ups, and then we have a wrestling game. With that being said though, it is actually a very fun title, and although it was meant for a vertical screen, I think Code Mystics and Arcade 1UP did this tastefully enough, including a bezel package around the game, so you don't just have dead space surrounding the screen, and it actually does look 
pretty good. And although this is a game I will probably not play much, if at all, I am sure there are many wrestling fans that are going to be really happy to have access and will make good use of it. So in terms of my thoughts on this machine, it is actually a really really awesome cabinet. In fact, it may actually be my favorite cabinet from Arcade 1UP so far. The artwork is beautiful and gives great tribute to the original machine, and the emulation is truly flawless and has a great gameplay experience. As for the damage out of the box, I hope Arcade 1UP really focuses on their quality control moving forward because this is kind of an issue that you shouldn't see when you are paying $600 Canadian for a device. Additionally, the button mapping in some cases, while inconvenient, really isn't a deal breaker from my perspective, and we have seen them release firmware updates fixing similar issues, so maybe this is on that list for a fix too. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. It is currently out of stock, but do you want to see Arcade 1UP put this thing back into production for another run? Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video and thumbs down if you didn't. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.